Welcome to part three of our 100 live sale call reviews. This is the final part. Hopefully we actually get to 100 calls. And if you are just finding part three, so in part one, we listened to 50 live sales calls of objections in the first 30 seconds. Part two, we listen to objections at the end. And in this part, we're going to be listening to sales calls and kind of reviewing their discovery process and their education process, because that is really where the sale is made. And if you can prevent objections and identify problems and recommend solutions to those problems, people are going to lean into you with your recommendations and be more likely to want to make a decision with you today because you are the expert. My name is Dana Neeson. If you're just finding this channel, I run a telesales team for Tailored Legacy across 17 states. We only sell one product, final expense insurance with one carrier, Lincoln Heritage. And hopefully I can help you have stronger, more sophisticated sales conversations. Hello, Alex. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Can I help? This is just Colton calling. It looks like you were looking for some information on protecting your family if you were to pass, and I just wanted to make sure you still needed that information. Yeah, if you could mail it to me, it'd be the best. <clears throat> yeah, of course I can send you something, but at this point, I'm not exactly sure what to send you. Uh, it might make more sense if I could ask you a few questions to figure out what you might be looking for and to okay. make sure I can even help you in the first place. Would that be okay? Yep. Okay. So the first thing I want to double check here is that your date of birth is correct. I'm showing it as, right? Yep. Okay. And you're in Illinois, right? Yep. Okay. I got that. Now, were you looking at um, like a term life insurance policy or a whole life, or are you familiar with the difference between the two? That's how it came up. So um, it'll be interesting to see how this discovery goes, because when you start off the bat with that question, you're going to miss the whole reason the customer inquired in the first place, right? We want to get to their why immediately. What caused you to start looking for information? before we even talk about what type of insurance would be appropriate for them, because we want to understand their why, and we want to understand what's, what is the most important thing for them to cover so that we can decide which type of policy would make the most sense for them. So I definitely would not start discovery this way. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not. Sure. So I'll explain it real quick. It's the, the main difference between term and whole life as with term, uh, term policies are usually, you know, cheaper monthly payments for more coverage. Um, so when you see someone talking about anything over like a hundred thousand, it's probably a term because that's the only way it would be affordable. Um, yeah. but the reason they're able to offer so much coverage for, you know, a pretty decent price is because it's, it's temporary. So for example, it's for like a term, so like a 10 year term. Um, and at the end of the 10 year term, if you're still alive, the policy cancels and you don't get any of your money. Now, if you do pass away within the 10 years, then your family would be well taken care of. So that's how like a term would work, as, whereas whole life, uh, whole life is good for your whole life. There's no term. It doesn't yeah. matter if you die in the next you know, five years or next, you know, if you die at 110, uh, it's never going to cancel. With that being the okay. case, um, it is more expensive. Because with term, 97% of the time, the insurance companies don't even have to pay anything out. And they just pocket all the money you spent them over, you know, 10 years. So they can offer it for a lot cheaper price. With whole life, the insurance company is going to have to write a check for the coverage amount. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. So it is priced yeah. a little bit more accordingly to that. So with that being said, now that I've kind of explained the differences to you, what do you think would be you would be looking for? Well, the first one, would you say that was, what was that called, term? Or, term, yeah. Okay. What years can you pick, I mean, that you have it? So you can pick anywhere between, like, well, so typically. Okay, I'm going to pause here really quick, because hopefully you're hearing that this agent is, like, obviously educating too soon, but boxing himself in a corner, we don't even know 
what this person is is looking for. And now it almost seems as if we can offer term because we're talk we're you know we're asking him too early like which one do you think is the better fit for you and he's like term now we're stuck talking about term and have to say we don't offer it so it's super awkward if we start with education plus we're doing all the talking and our customer is just sitting there like deer in headlights just trying to pay attention but it really needs to be about the customer here um <clears throat> let's keep going so, I mean, it depends on what you're, I mean, what are you wanting this to cover? I mean, are you wanting this to cover a funeral or are you wanting this to pay off a funeral? Yeah, this is junior. No, funeral. Okay. So if yeah. you're looking for this to cover a funeral, um, I would definitely recommend a whole life policy because the average funeral is only, you know, 7500 to $15,000. So yeah. a, a whole life policy is what you'd probably want. A whole life policy is actually build cash value over time too. So, you know, it's not like a term where you're just paying into it and you might lose everything. You know, it's you're building yeah. cash value, it never gets gonna cancel, your payment's never gonna go up, your coverage is never gonna go down. And you know, with whole life you're probably I'm kind of waiting for some more discovery questions, which is why I'm continuing to listen. Um, this call did not result in a sale. So I'm kind of trying to figure out when we're gonna get the customer to kind of talk about their their motivation looking at coverage amounts of like 50,000 and below, which is what you'd be looking for, for, for a funeral. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It's more than like for 20,000. Sure. Okay. That's what yeah, I had. So, in mind. Right. And a couple health questions in the past 12 months, have you used mm -hmm. any form of tobacco? No. I'm going to skip around a little bit. from your family not only will we get to work now we're talking about the fcgs it looks like it takes for insurance companies to pay out so they'll do everything they yeah so anyway the point of today's video was discovery and education and it looks like we went from discovery to fcgs and we didn't really get the customer to engage with us enough talk to us enough we didn't ask any consequence questions. We don't know if there's a plan B. We don't know his experience with life insurance, like how long he's been looking, what he's found. Um, a lot of those places in the script kind of tell you how to sell them by what has caused them to not buy prior to getting on the phone with you. And so um, I don't think we need to listen to any more of that call. Um, so before we move on to call number two, since today I have a room full of some agents, let's open it up for questions. If you have some. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, in the early on, just out of curiosity, what caused you to look for coverage in the first place? Uh -huh. And they go, well, I'm just getting older. Mm -hmm. That's the most common reason. Mm -hmm. And it's my favorite one, but what's the okay. question? Well, I would, when I get that, I feel stuck to be like, well, was there a death in the family or like, I would love to, when, when it's your favorite question, you're like, oh, salivating. Like what, what's your next question after that, that keeps opening up discovery? Yeah. So it's actually probably more simple than you're giving yourself credit for, which would just be something to the effect of what about getting older causes you to be concerned or what about getting older has you thinking that um, it's time to get a policy in place. That's all you have to do is basically state their reason and then just repeat it back to them, right? So what about X, Y, Z? What about that has you thinking that it's, a, it's, a, it's the time to put something in place? And that will get them to expand without putting words in their mouth or feeding them reasons. And it's time. Yeah. Right. Did that was that helpful? Oh Anyone yeah, super. I mean, the moment you said it, I'm like, oh yeah, like now it makes sense. But I'm like, when I get that one, I'm like, okay, I know. And you know, it's time. really a, a right. it's actually a very simple formula mm -hmm. that that you can once you understand just that simple concept. I was listening. I was doing coaching calls right all day yesterday, and we were listening to a sales call, um, and in part of discovery, the 
customer said they already have insurance, but they were interested in, in possibly getting another quote. And so the agents, you know, asked him, how much coverage does your policy provide? And the response from the agent or from the customer was, well, I, I only have about 11,000. And the next question was, okay, well, are you looking to increase or possibly replace? Why, why, why would that be a mistake? Did anybody pick up on sort of the verbal cue that I just Oh, I, I only have, then, then I would, well. Using the same mean? formula that I just gave right. you of oh, the getting right. older, how would mm -hmm. you use that same formula to get that person to expand on their answer without feeding them answers? Uh, oh, go ahead, Sammy. Yeah. No, no, Terry, take, take over, it's cool. Uh, may, may I would just say, oh, okay, so you have $11,000, so. What is it about the eleven thousand? Have you thinking about, you know, looking for more coverage? Well, we don't know if she's actually looking for more coverage. She was open to getting another quote, right? We <laughs> overcame the objection. Can I have you one more quote? So the the words that were used was, "I only have eleven thousand. So how do you use her words to get her to expand on what she said? I think it's in the script. Not, no, because this it's is not. something that well, wasn't scriptable, right? This I mean, Matt, I guess what, what you're saying, maybe I'm just say, okay, so if I'm hearing you right. You say you only have $11,000. So what had you interested in maybe getting another quote then? Something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anyone else want to give it a shot? Yeah, I would say, why do you feel it's only 11000 Why do you feel like you need more? Right. So mm -hmm. also much closer, except I st you're still using assumptive language there with the why do you feel you want more? I want to try to stay neutral mm -hmm. and not put any any words in their mouth because she didn't say she wanted more. All mm -hmm. she said is that I only have 11,000. Right. So what I would say is. So I heard you say that you only have 11,000. I guess. What did you mean by only? Mm -hmm. right? Then I'm not assuming anything. I'm, I'm asking her so she can expand on why she chose that word. And then I'm going to get so much more clarification behind what the customer said. Just like we said with Sammy earlier, I'm just getting older. Okay. Well, I guess what about getting older has you thinking that you might want to get some coverage now, right? You're not making any sort of assumptive, assumptive statements or putting any ideas in their head. It's just asking them, taking what they said and asking them to clarify. And that's really um, what you do every time you get something where you want someone to expand on their answers, you just repeat it back to them without um, without using the assumptive, like we we knew it's she wanted more, but I don't want to say that. I want her to say that. And so why? is it, uh, what did you mean by that? Um, could you unpack that a little bit more for me? Um, those are all variations. Of say, I heard you say only, I guess. What did you mean by that? Right. Exactly, Sammy. Good job. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to this call. Uh, Terry, this one happens to be yours. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> Sharing you. Chance <laughs> <laughs> get back to you and see if I can help you out with that. I, I got an insurance. I got life insurance already. Okay. Now, how long ago did you get that? Oh, I don't know, six, uh, two, eight, ten weeks ago, I guess. Okay, well, well, I got you on the phone. Would it be reasonable maybe to just offer you one more quote? Just be sure you offered the best policy available? Well, I, I actually, uh, I'm happy with what I got. Okay, well, 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 let me ask you this. And, and you know, we offer a, a free service to all of our policy holders. That You're going to ask me who I'm, who I'm with, and, I, and I'm trying to think. I don't even know what, what the hell... I, who the hell they are? I I uh, right. I, I got it. I think it's uh, um, wow, what the hell? Omaha, oh, oh, uh, Omaha. I yeah, I believe it's mutual Omaha. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I'm on to it. Yeah. Okay. How much coverage did you get with them? Uh, just uh, what minimal. The the just the very minimal. Now, I know different people say minimal, like two or three thousand or five thousand. Um, I know. Uh, 
It was like it's. It, I think it's fifteen dollars a month or something like that. Fifteen dollars. It sells the prior on maybe a couple thousand dollars in. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I did it for reasons of um, different reasons. I I did it for uh, for a different reason other than the actual coverage that I. It, anyway, so what, what do you got? Okay. Well, what may I ask you now? Uh, when you said you got it for different reasons, so so the, the coverage you got with 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 the, if it is with Metro, is it kind of like a a limited benefit where it doesn't pay out for two years or? Oh, that part I don't know. I I wasn't concerned with. So one note here is um, with the final expense industry in general, you just have to make you you have to make some assumptions that most people don't have a clue what they got. So right. instead of trying to ask them to give you the information on their policy, you just kind of have to act as if it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Okay. It's okay. just going to go right back to, okay, well, that's not a problem. Like you got permission to engage. So the first question you want to ask once you get permission to engage is. What? What got what you thinking about coverage in the first place? Yes. You go back to start, right? Yeah. We're playing a board game. We're playing Monopoly or whatever. You go back to start yeah. every yeah. time. And and so the, the very common mistake that a lot of people make is they allow the customer to dictate the flow of the conversation as opposed to you dictating it back to them. So you overcome the objection. You get permission to engage. And don't worry about the weeds, right? Like getting into the weeds, we just go back to start. Perfect. So is it okay if I ask you, because he was like, what do you got? Yes, okay. Can I ask you a few questions to get a better understanding? I guess what caused you to start looking for information in the first place? And then you just go through discovery, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you get into the weeds, you are losing control. You're extending the length of your conversation um, which you don't want to be on the phone for an, an extra 30 minutes with someone if you aren't developing, specifically developing how or if you're able to help them in the first place. Okay. See where you took it. Yeah, this is interesting call to say the least. <laughs> What's that? This is an interesting call to say the least. Well, as far well, as why, why, why he got the coverage. It's, it's funny. Okay. And I got it was because at, at my age, if I had any at all i would be able to qualify for um a rebate and i specifically got it for that very reason okay so so you're you're and, and then i never correct. even chased a rebate <laughs> thing you know i mean so yeah okay, now, just, now we just said I mean, now when you said rebate, I mean, what, what, what kind of re I mean, well, it was, it was rebate? Well, California, in the state of California, they offer some kind of, uh, um, after you retire, I'm retired. So, okay. so I just retired last year. So, so they, they had some kind of like thirty thirty six hundred $3,600 or $3,200, something, something that you could get, but you needed to have life insurance in order to qualify for it. So I called this lady up and, and um, off, offline, online, I mean. It sounds like it was a broker who probably got this inquiry and used whatever ad he saw as a way to drive this person to get life insurance to qualify for whatever rebate ad he saw. Did you end up getting that feeling, Terry, when you were going well, through the I was kind of tired into confusion with Medicare because I know Medicare has a similar type benefit where they're offering people $3,500, but not tied into life insurance. And that, that's what threw me a curve because I'm actually going to bring it up and ask you if you know of any. I mean, I know California is kind of unique in a lot of different ways. And so I didn't know if it was some special program they had out there that I knew nothing about. So it kind of just threw me a loop. And I was like, oh, OK, interesting. Well, the good lesson here with this call, this call, you were on the phone with him for an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah. This might be an example of identifying a saleable or non-saleable opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. We went back. We had like three rebuttals at the end as far as just getting to asking health questions and kept on going back. He just started this new relationship. 
where he but, doesn't do nothing. And, and, and we went back and forth, back and forth. And, and yeah, but this is what I'm trying to say is we won't, we can't sell everybody, right? We right. should sell everybody. Yeah. And so identifying that in discovery is what we're trying to accomplish. And if yeah. the only reason this guy bought a minimum, minimal amount of insurance was to qualify for this rebate, yeah. it's not our customer. Send to another one. This is Nancy's. Hello. Hello, Carmen. Yes. Hi, uh, Carmen. This is just Nancy calling. I noticed that you recently inquired about some options to protect your family if you were to pass. Were you looking into this for yourself or other family members as well? For myself. Okay. So am I to assume that you don't have anything in place right now? No. Nothing at all. All right. I'm just curious, Carmen. What caused you to start looking in the first place then? Because my husband just passed away. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry to hear that. Gosh, it's wow. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. You must be really going through some difficult times. By any chance, did he pass away with life insurance to at least ease that financial burden? No. Oh, he did not. Okay. All right. And um, are you in the process of uh, trying to pay off that funeral expenses then? We did pay it, but it wasn't easy. Yeah, I'm sure it was very difficult. Okay. All right. So now you just want to make sure that your children don't go through what you experienced? Yeah. No, I get it. Okay. All right. So I do need to let you know that this call may be monitored and recorded today. Again, my condolences to you, Carmen. I can't imagine you. what you're going through. Um, but my job is just to get you the information so that when you are ready to make a decision, at least you're capable of making it an informed decision. Okay? Yes. So... Uh, let me just ask you some questions so I know exactly, you know, what you're looking for. Are you to cover just your funeral expenses or is there other debt that you're concerned about your children having to pay for when you pass? Um, just that. The funeral just the expenses. funeral. Okay. And are you looking to be buried, like in a casket, or are you looking to be cremated? Buried. You want to be buried next to your husband? Um, no, we cremated him. Oh, you cremated him. Okay, all right. But you want to be in a casket, uh, you know, uh, buried um, with a traditional, traditional uh, burial. And your yeah. children are all aware of your final wishes, then, right? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, let me just go over what we do, Carmen. Life insurance is not just something you buy off the shelf, thing that you're going to be looking a good fit for you. Now, am I the first person you're talking to about this, or have you talked to others? <laughs> this is the first one. This is the first time. Okay. All right. And um, did you already have a conversation with your children that this is maybe something that you're going to be looking into so that they don't carry this yes. financial burden okay all right yes. got it all right <clears throat> so oh i would have asked what did they say right that's another way to get them to expand you know yes if you don't be happy with yes no answers yes i had the conversation oh okay well what did they say <laughs> i want to know what if they said don't get it <laughs> I want to know. Carmen is that Lincoln Heritage only provides permanent whole life protection as opposed to term. Now, do you happen to know the difference between the two? Have you ever had life insurance in the past or is this your first time? Yeah, first time. Okay. So there are two types of life insurance policies out there. One is called term life insurance and 
other one is called whole life insurance. Um, first of all, it says your date of birth is February 64. Okay. All right. So term life insurance is what it actually sounds like. It's temporary protection that's designed to terminate. That's why they call it life insurance. The reason I want to go over this with you is because you're going to see the most advertisements on term life insurance. So I want to help you get educated on it. Um, you're going to see these ads on TV, on the internet, and you'll even get solicitations in the mailbox through companies like mm -hmm. AARP, Colonial Pen, and Globe Life. They're all advertising term life insurance, which is temporary protection. What that means is the term period of this policy could go on for maybe 10 or 15 years. And if you do not pass away within that term period, your policy will automatically cancel all the money that you dumped into it goes to the uh, life insurance company because they still insured you. And then you'll have to start all over again, except now you're 10 or 15 years older. Okay. It is the okay. cheapest form of life insurance. And the reason why it's the cheapest is because it only pays out 3% of the time. What that means is, 97% of the people who own term life insurance, they will eventually outlive their policy. And then they no longer have insurance. That's what it means, okay? Now, life insurance companies are only going to give or approve term life insurance to those who are the healthiest, okay? Because they want they want a hundred and ten percent guarantee that they're not going to. Okay, so she's kind of mixing term option one and two together right here. Um, also, who knows? I know I know one person for sure in here does, but who knows the green light, yellow light, red light analogy that I talk about? The longer you're talking, the less that you're listening and absorbing or even paying attention. Right. So, so um, this was not something I came up with. Um, I can't think of the person off the top of my head. Anyway, from zero to 30, the customer is listening to you. They're understanding what you're saying. They're taking it in from 30 to 60. It's starting to be too much. They're starting to tune you out a little bit. They're not retaining everything that you're telling them. And then once you get past 60, it's like red light. They have, it's not that they're tuning you out. It's just that their capacity to take in the information you're giving them. It's just way too much. And um, if you have not checked in to ask questions, does that make sense? Do you have any questions about what I just said? Do you see how that might not be what you would want for something that's supposed to take care of funeral costs? I guess, tell me why you feel that way, right? So we have to play this ping pong game with our customers that we have to explain something, pause, check in, explain something, pause, check in, ask a question. To die on them when they have this policy. It is considered a just-in-case policy, okay? But I want okay. to tell you about it because I don't want you to one day see an advertisement that promises $20,000 for $9.95 and think, well, why didn't Nancy get me this policy, okay? So advertisements get $20,000 for $9.95. Our seniors do get sucked into it because that's a nice price. We all could, you know, most of them could afford $9.95. So they sign up for it. But then they quickly understand that that $9.95 goes up to $49.95 one year. And that $49.95 goes up to $89.95 a few years after wow. that. Yeah. So it's a price that constantly escalates to a point where you guys can no longer afford it and you'll eventually just have to cancel, okay? So you're not locking in anything, all right? A, it's temporary. B, you're not locking in anything. That is term life insurance. The opposite of that is, 
is called whole life insurance. And so no, no opportunity to get the customer to talk. We do, we did this with discovery and now we're doing it with education where I really haven't heard the customer speak more than a couple of seconds. And these are huge red flags when it comes to engaging with somebody, the less they talk, the lesser chance you have of getting a sale. And that's a permanent policy. And what happens is when you get approved for permanent policies, your rates are locked in, so it can never go up. Your coverage amount can never go down. And no matter how old you get or how sick you get down the road, the company could never cancel it on you. It is literally the only policy that is guaranteed to pay out 100% of the time because we're all going to die one day. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Now, now the, the disadvantage of uh, whole life insurance is the fact that it is a little bit pricier than term life insurance because every insurance company will need to pay out. All right. Uh, so it's a little bit pricier and unaffordable. Otherwise, nobody will get it. And plus, uh, the coverage amount is not going to be hugely significant because, again, life insurance has to pay out. And they're not willing to pay out $100,000, let's say, right? So they're not going right. to get level of coverage. So the coverage is going to be very well contained. Now, when you say that you want to cover your funeral expenses to make sure that none of your children pay out of pocket or become financially burdened, do you see that the proper policy would be the whole life insurance policy? Yeah, because you want something to stay with you when you actually pass away, right? And you want to yeah. guarantee that you will pay out when you do pass. Okay, so now that you understand. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop with this call. We went through uh, 11 minutes and I think, or 11 minutes and 13 seconds, and I would guess... 11 minutes was just Nancy talking <laughs> the whole time. Um, so just as a voyeur, as just listening to this call, even the way that she over explained term versus whole life, I was even confused, right? It was very confusing for me to even listen to. So how did it make you guys feel even being educated in life insurance? Well, at the end, she, when talking about term and whole life, she explained everything. I felt also a bit confused, but she never asked them, why do you feel term wouldn't be appropriate? And then on the other hand, why do you feel term, excuse me, whole life would be appropriate? Yeah. And she got both questions. Because, and why, why do I always say that like a broken record? Because it doesn't matter what our what opinion is. It only matters what they say to themselves and they hear themselves saying. Yes, exactly. Good. Same, same with the same within discovery. It was a lot of, of the agent kind of just putting words into her mouth, even at the very end of education, it was, do you see that this is the appropriate type of policy for you? She said, yes. And then the agent said, because, and then just answered the question. Mm -hmm. and there, well, there was really no question because this, this, and this, instead of saying, and why do you feel that way? Right. Get the customer to talk. This is the number one thing that will increase your sales overnight. Literally it will increase your sales overnight. If you just get your customers to talk. It's, it, it's such an easy thing to do. And it's something that we just get so one track minded in that we just want to get through everything really quick so we can rush to the quotes. And when you rush to the quotes, you miss out on what we're trying to accomplish, right? That, um, that emotional tension of them telling us why they want this in the first place and why it's important for them to have and what would happen if they didn't and making sure they really understand the insurance policy types. And the only way we can know that is if they tell us. And um, those are those are really, really hard to sell at the end. Um, let me see, it did end in a callback. So this, this was not a sale. Yeah, um, just something came to mind. Um, 
is is the price objection and um, things just being unaffordable for them. Uh, in the last company that I worked for, um, they had us do a financial inventory towards the end um, before we gave them prices, just so we can be prepared for that objection. Has that ever been considered or would you ever suggest that? I think that if I struggled to um, sell without doing a financial inventory, it may be something that I would consider, but I can only go off of the fact that if I got someone into a conversation more than five minutes, Adam and I measured that I had a 70-ish percent close rate. And um, I never needed to do anything like that, <clears throat> right? Because, and, and so I don't know it may be something that you're thinking of doing because you're not mastering the first part. It's hard to say. We can pull up one of your calls for sure and kind of listen to see what you're doing and asking and are you creating. Like by the time I got to the end, before I even got to health questions, it was literally not a matter of whether or not they were going to buy. It was just what... What can we afford? And usually when someone is very emotionally engaged and has a high sense of urgency, they will justify getting more than what their financial inventory looks like because they'll make sacrifices to make this work. So um, I, I would hesitate to do that because I don't want to limit someone's options based on what their stated finances are. If someone were to ask me what my stated finances were, I don't even think I would be able to completely accurately answer that on that phone call. Me, right? And so, and plus we're dealing with, again, a population that has a pretty poor history of managing their money. They may not even know everything they have going on. So I would be really hesitant to do that. Um, I think that you will have a much better chance of getting someone to really, really what this sale is about is getting someone out of their comfort zone of not doing something and parting with any amount of money that they have to protect their family. So we have to get them to see, they we have to get them to tell us why it's important for them to do it. And then the money is just, the, the only variable is how much can they afford, not not whether or not they they want to do it. I guess sometimes your price objections are whether or not they want to do it. And they're it's hiding behind price because they don't see the value, right? It's hard to sell. It's hard to tell though, but I think that was a long answer to your question where I'm conflicted, I'm but I'm leaning towards, I, I don't think I would do it. I don't think I've ever needed to do it. Cool. What do you guys think? I have, a, I have a question, Johan. Um, so I was a year at, at um, AIG. We always ask them um, um, their finances. So how much you make in a year? So when you say financial inventory, do you mean that, or what is, or, or um, what do you mean? Yeah, um, that's definitely one of the questions I would ask. Maybe on a monthly basis, just to help them to kind of see. Okay, mm -hmm. is this even something that we can afford right now? It'll help me to find a, a price for them that's comfortable right off the bat. And later, if they tell me they can't afford it, I'll be like, well, John, I mean, you just gave me your financial inventory. You have $500 left at the end of the month. What's $30 a month? What's going on here? Like, let's talk about it. But um, I, so that's kind of why I brought it up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that too, Dana, that your script doesn't have that, but then because of your record and then pretty much those who are making it, they're not asking that. So I'm okay, right. this, this makes sense that uh you know, it, it, you know, give it a try, the right. But yeah, I think this, that with your own... This sale isn't about price, right? People aren't buying life insurance based on price. They're not. That's why brokers who are contracted with 20 carriers get the same objections that we do. Because it's not about the price. It's that they don't want to do business with you. Right? Or they haven't right. gotten that enough emotional urgency to mm -hmm. want to do it with you today. So they're going to fall back on something else. I might be able to afford something, but I might not be able to justify it because I might not want it that bad. So I strongly disagree. I think that's a weak approach and I think we can do better. 
yeah, I think winning on emotion, they'll they'll make other sacrifices to make sure they'll rearrange their budget. I mean, that's anybody who sells cars, nobody says two hundred ninety nine a month. That's all I want. And all of a sudden, they're in the dealership for three hours, and their car payments like three forty nine or four ninety nine. They don't. They're in love with the car. Yeah, I walked And into a car dealership eight years ago, nine years ago. I've had the same car forever. My husband and I thought, okay, we don't want to spend more than five hundred a month for a car payment, right? If someone would have asked me, "What do you want to spend on a car?" and I said, "We'd like to spend five hundred a month," they might have only just shown me cars that could lease or get a payment of five hundred a month. But what happened was they asked me, what am I looking for in a car? And the first car they took me to was way outside of my stated $500 a month budget. And that's the car I ended up getting because I fell in love with it. So I justified more than doubling my monthly payment because that is what I wanted. I have no idea what I want. We just came up with the price. This is what we think we want to spend on a car. I don't think it means anything though, right? I think that we can, we can, we really can do better if we really think about the psychology of how people purchase things. And a lot of it is just based on emotion. Okay, let's go to another call. Hi, hi, Erin, how are you? I'm here, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Well, my name is Emily, and I'm guessing by the 323 area code, you're in California, right? Correct. Okay, so well, I am a licensed agent out here, and I do have to tell you that our call may be monitored and recorded today for quality assurance. So, Aaron, I understand you're possibly looking at some coverage for yourself. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So then before I go into everything we do, I just have a few questions I'd like to ask you just so I can get a better understanding of what you might be looking for and make sure I can even help you in the first place. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. So, Aaron, do you have any kind of policy in place right now to protect your family? And what question do we skip? Why are you even, and what got you motivated to start looking around? That's so important. A very common skipped question. I guess what caused you to look for information in the first place? What had you walking in the store today, right? Get the why behind the search. Such an important question you don't want to skip. Hey, something were to happen to you? Yeah, I do. But I you wanna... need... oh. Yeah, I do. I just want to get a little extra. Okay, so that was my question. So you're Oh, okay. So you're just looking to increase your total coverage. Yeah. How much coverage do you have right now? I got about seventy-five thousand. No. Okay. And how much more are you looking for? I'm trying to see what uh uh at least maybe twenty twenty-five thousand right now, a little more than around me off. Okay. All right. Well, so what expenses are you most concerned about your family having to pay for when you pass away? Okay. Before we ask that question that everybody loves, what do we know? We know that he has a $75,000 policy and we know he's looking for about 25,000 more to round off to an even hundred. Before we move on and ask what expenses is he mostly concerned about? What do we not know? How long he's had the policy. Yep, that would be really important. Why is that really important, Ed? How long have you had it for? Well, it might be uh, terminating. It's a, probably a term policy. We don't know what he's paying for it. That would tell us if it's a term or whole life, maybe. And we don't know uh, why he wants to increase it. Okay, why he doesn't well, hold feel on. These are, these are two enough. separate things. I would ask... The why are you, why do you feel like what you have is not enough after I ask what expenses so that I can kind of relate those two. But the okay. first thing you said was, you know, how long have you had it? So how long have you had it may or may not tell us if it's term or whole life. Right. But more importantly, why is it also important to let's pretend it is whole life? Why is it important to find out how long ago he's had it? 
Well, my thinking would be if he's had it a while, it's a dividend paying company. It could be offset and paid by dividends now. Could he be. has he has money from that policy just to shift it over to what we do and have a paid up policy on what he has if it were whole life with a dividend paying company. Maybe. What else? Uh, um, well, then Johan has his hand up. What, why else is it important to find out how long someone has had it? Um, I would think, um, you know, if, if it was fairly recent, like maybe in the last month or so, uh, they could still be in free look. So they have the opportunity to maybe, if they don't need all that coverage for what they're actually looking for, we might be able to get them to make adjustments to that policy in order to make room for a policy with us. Maybe. I would also say if he's had this policy for 10 or 20 years, and it is whole life, we know it's going to be a heck of a lot cheaper than it is today, right? It might be the same price for 25000 as he's paying for 75000 And so knowing how long someone has had something is really important just for that history. If he said, I've only had it for less than a year, there's a follow-up question I would want to ask that would help me understand if it's term or whole life without asking, is it term or whole life? You know, I love to be tricky that way. Ed rolls his eyes. <laughs> I'm just thinking. <laughs> because it's a lot of times much. they don't know. Now he might know, but there's a much easier way to definitively know what someone has without asking them what they have. And, and without asking them the price? What with, and without, without directly asking them the price, but it has something to do with price. I'm lost. Very non-confrontational approach. About, about price without asking them what they're paying and without asking them if it's term or whole life. Anyone know? I'm lost. I'm it's lost too. <laughs> it, okay, so if he got the policy less than a year ago, 75,000, we know he's probably 50s or 60s. I would say, okay, and um, you don't have to tell me exactly, but is your payment for that policy, is it less than $100 a month by chance? Okay. And if he says yes, you know, for later, right? Always for later. If uh -huh. he says no, I pay way more than that. It's probably whole life then, uh -huh. right? Very easy, non-confrontational way of just you coming up with a logical conclusion about what they possibly have based on that type of question. So I wanna know how long he's had it for. Um, and I definitely want to know um, depending on his answer, will give me additional clarifying questions. What else don't we know before we ask the what expenses? We talked about it earlier on another call. Yeah, he uh, forgot to ask any savings, investments, pension, or any plan B, essentially. That question is actually um, more relevant if someone doesn't have any life insurance at all. Right. This person already sees the value in life insurance because he already has it. And so, but what I want to know is something else. Why he wants 25,000 more. Before that, that's, that's the question you asked earlier where I said, I want to know what expenses he wants to cover. And then I'm going to follow it up with, and why do you feel like the 75,000 you have is not enough to take care of X, Y, Z expenses? So, but what didn't we ask? We are still in, in patient intake here, the history. What's got him looking for additional coverage? No. Or what what is looking for coverage? Or Do you have any period? additional coverage? How long has how he long? Been yeah. So how long know. have you been looking for some additional coverage? What have you found? Right. I want to know if he's gotten other quotes. I want to know why he hasn't gone with these other companies. I want to know what those quotes are. So that way, when I go to which section, I know how to educate him, right? Education. So if you don't know how long someone's been looking, let's say he's been looking for a year, six months. You've been looking for 25,000 of additional coverage for more than six months. That's kind of a long time. I guess what stopped you from putting something in place? Let's get the objections. Bring him out in the open. This is going to be the same reason he's going to give you when you give him a quote, right? What if he says, well, everything I've been looking for is too expensive. 
which is a lot of times what stops people from getting something expensive. I guess, what do you mean? It's expensive. You're, that's your non-confrontational way of asking what type of quotes have you gotten? Because it just allows them to just tell you, well, I got this for this and this for this. <laughs> that's what you need to accurately help someone understand why they're getting those quotes if it comes up. But if we don't ask, we are going into the blind, right? We just were hoping that our generic <laughs> way of educating someone is going to be the answer and every all the light bulbs are going to turn on and click, but usually it doesn't work out that way. So we're missing information here. We're going right on to expenses. So let's see what he says. Uh, very uh, expenses and, you know, uh, you know, uh, just basic things to hold my wife over, you know, okay. to however she, uh, deals with that situation, whatever, but that every comes to that, which I definitely will eventually. Okay. Well, so will it be your wife who's the one he'll be, you know, going to the funeral home and. Okay. We got a little bit of information. We got burial and basic expenses for the wife. Number one question we've already talked about. Well, why do you feel like the 75,000 you have right now is not enough to take care of that? right? What Ed has said twice. Now we ask that here because why do we want, like, we need a reason to justify this additional coverage or possibly justify a different amount, right? Because sometimes people don't realize how much they might need. A lot of times we get people that say they want something, but it isn't necessarily what they need. So why do you feel like the 75 is not enough? to take care of this and this. Now we're going to get his emotional reasons why, which are important, which help create that urgency. And we're going to want to get him to expand on something here. What do we want him to expand on? What do you mean by basic needs? Right? This is again, just taking what they say Sammy, right? Same formula. I guess when you say basic needs, what, what does that mean exactly? This is how we're going to help somebody paint the bigger picture so we can make much better specific recommendations when we get there. This is all about gathering intel so that way when we say, when we get to the end, this is what I recommend and here's why, we have so much more information about where they've been, why they feel they have a deficit, specifically what they wanted to cover for. I also hope she asks the consequence question when we get there. So I guess what happens if you aren't able to find a policy to get you to that even hundred? Um, I guess, what, what would you do then? Because now you're going to get the objection. What's the obvious objection that this customer will get, that you'll get, just based on what we already know? Anyway, I'm just going to keep what I have, right? So if we don't know why it's important for him to add more, like why he feels what he has is not enough, if we don't understand the consequences of not putting that additional coverage in place, how can how are we possibly going to be able to overcome, I'm just going to keep what I have, right? Every time you're in discovery, you have to mine for possible objections to plan. You have to actually, you're taking the beginning and you're planning your end. That's what we're doing is we're mining for objections and we're asking questions to overcome those now, have a much better opportunity of mining for those and overcoming them in the beginning. So they can't say it in the end. They can't say at the end, I'm just going to keep what I have if they said they told you all the reasons why they don't want to keep what they have. <laughs> it's crazy. They're going to just give us a different objection, but at least we've overcame that. So any so, questions on that before I continue? Yeah. So with that said, I mean, if you do find out at this point, well, I'll just keep it. Then if I can't find anything that, that I can afford, when do you just kind of cut your losses in? Just kind of. You're not going to end the call because you have oh. someone that has said they're looking for an extra coverage. Yeah. But if you say, if you, if you get someone that says, well, if I can't find something, I'm just going to keep what I have. 
now you better you better know because the prices that they're getting and the prices you have aren't going to be significantly different. Mm -hmm. So in order for someone to justify getting this additional coverage, because we know it's for burial, we already know the extra 20, 25,000 that he's looking for, that's all going to go to the funeral. And that rest of the 75 that he has right now, it's going to take mm -hmm. its sweet time to pay out to the family when that payout comes. I already have my plan. So if he, if he doesn't have any sense of urgency, I'm going to create that sense of urgency right when I get there. But if he already has urgency, plus I combine it with my idea of what that 25 minutes can do, then it's going to take it over the top. But I'm not going to let it go if someone says, it, you know, has interest that they want something, but I might not win on price is the point. So I have to at least know where I'm headed. I don't want to go in the blind is more the point. I want to at least be prepared for what I'm up against. All right, let's continue. Planning your funeral and having to pay for everything. Okay. So I get it. So I, you know, I guess you're just trying to make sure your wife doesn't have to incur any kind of cost or any kind of financial burden. Is that right? Correct. Correct. The other thing that he gave us in, as a clue in the beginning, if you guys heard it, the very first thing he said was, I have kids. But then he said he wanted to make sure his wife was covered for basic expenses. So now I'm kind of curious, are the kids still young? Are they still living in the house? <clears throat> Is expenses for the kids? So it's really important. Again, this would have been also really important for her to say, can you expand on what you mean by these basic expenses? We might have found out that it, that they have young kids at home and there's more bills than what we think there are. Um, also really important not to, not to just only focus on the burial insurance, but always bring all that other stuff up the whole time. Okay. And then have you... Did you say you want to be buried? Is that what you said? Maybe I misunderstood you. Yeah. You want yeah. a traditional burial? Yeah. You don't want to be cremated, right? No. no I don't. Okay. Is there anything else you're concerned about? Um, uh, I just want to see which you are you the agent or am I not to be? Let's we'll talk to someone else, first of all. Let's start no, here. I'm the agent. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm the agent. Okay. Yeah, because things like, you know, you go on there and you fill these things out, and I got a million people calling me. Oh, I'm And sure. then a lot of them are... <laughs> yeah, man, and they say, matter of fact, uh, they're calling and calling and calling. So uh, I just try to... Uh, I want to see what your... What, what company are you with, first of all? Yeah, yeah. What clues did he just give us there? A lot of places. What's sounds, the of it. sounds like he's been talking to a lot of places. Sure has. Wouldn't you want to know what those conversations were? <laughs> I do. I I do. I'm very curious. I want to know yeah. who, he's, who he's spoken to, what he's found, what's prevented him from putting something in place. We're missing it. Yeah, I'm with Lincoln Heritage Life Insurance Company. Lincoln Heritage. I haven't heard of that yeah. one. Okay. So, are they based out of California, California here? They're actually based out of Arizona. They're in Phoenix. And they, oh. they've actually been in business for 60 years, and we're actually the leader out there in this final expense insurance world. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a great policy. They're a very strong company. They're A-plus rated. Um, so what I can do, if you want me to, Aaron, I can walk you through, um, you know, what we do so you understand it. And then if you like it and feel like it would be helpful to your wife, I just would have to ask you a few health questions because that's how we okay. figure out, you know, what you qualify for. And then once I know that, I can give you your range of options and pricing. And then you can just decide what you want to do. All right. Let's, all right, let's, 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 let's at least get this started. I want to see what you want. The no consequence question. Do you know the difference between a whole life policy and what a term policy is? Yeah, well, one, uh, I guess the whole life part of it is like an investment, so to speak. It, it gets cash value, mm -hmm. where a term, on the other hand, doesn't. It's, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so terms basically... 
is your other policy, that big policy you have, the 75000 is that a term policy or a whole life? No, no, it's a whole life. Whole life, okay. Whole life. <laughs> because term insurance is basically temporary protection. So it lasts for whatever the term is, which could be 10 or 15 years. But then when you reach the age of 80, most every term company will cancel people just because of their age. Okay, so whole life is the exact opposite. There's smaller policies, but once you're approved, your payment will never change. Your coverage doesn't go down and you'll never be canceled because of your age. So they're really meant to be permanent policies to last, like the name says, like your whole life. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and like you said, they do slowly build cash value over time, um, whereas a term policy doesn't do that. So, so are you looking for another whole life policy? And it depends on what the race is. Um, okay. Okay. Depend on what the race is. Okay. Well, I'll explain to you why people choose Lincoln here. Okay. So we're now on to FCGS. What did you guys think of that education? I felt uneasy and like there was so much more I needed to know. I, when someone says it depends on what the rate is, to me, that's a red flag that they've gotten quotes and they're shopping around because they don't understand why they're getting the quotes that they're getting. And the best way to strengthen education is through using the quotes they've gotten and inserting it here. This is why you've gotten this quote. This is why you're seeing it advertised for this, right? So the quotes, one of my favorite things to do in education is to, um, the word I'm looking for is not justify, but to- Value. What? Value. Validate, actually, is the word I'm looking for. To okay. validate some of the other whole life quotes they're getting by saying, look, this is pretty much the price anywhere you go, right? You've gotten two, three quotes. They're, they sound very similar. So I guess when you say it depends on the price, are you looking for something significantly cheaper than these quotes that you've gotten already? Yes. Okay. Well, if that's the case, your only option then would be to get a term policy. So before we continue, we have to really figure out what type of policy is important to you and maybe we should consider less coverage so we can get you a payment that feels comfortable, right? So we have to go back. We have to keep going back until the customer really understands that they aren't going to get a significantly cheaper price no matter how many companies they shop. And that's why it's important to know what other quotes they've gotten so you don't bash those quotes and say things like, oh, that's a lot of money because you just literally buried yourself before you even were given the chance because your quote will be just the same or higher. It's validating those quotes. We're all going to be about the same price, give or take. And before we even move on, there isn't going to be something that's less expensive than what you're finding. So, and they have to either be okay with that. And then you can help them understand what makes us different. Or you have to come the, to the to the decision that maybe term is a better option for them because they can get more coverage for less money as long as they know it's going to cancel. And when all else fails, you use the briefcase example. Let me just give it to you in a different way, right? Let's just say I gave you two briefcases, right? One had $25,000 in it and one had $10,000 in it. If you take the $25,000 briefcase today, there's only a 3% chance that your family's going to get it when you die. If you take the $10,000 briefcase today, it, there's a 100% chance your family's going to get it when you die. Which briefcase do you take? 100% of the time, they'll say, well, of course, of course, I'll take the 10,000. And when they say that, you say, well, then there's your answer. You don't want a term policy just because it provides more coverage for less money. You want a policy that's going to be guaranteed to be there for your family when you pass away. And we have to work with your current age, your current health, and what the current costs are. Do you understand that? Are you okay with that? Because if you're not, 
there's no sense in continuing, right? I always kind of slowly take it away because they want to lean in. They appreciate that. They appreciate the fact that I'm not trying to just, you know, talk them into something. I'm giving them the facts and I'm letting them decide. Because once they've decided, they can't go back on that. I'm not the one that decided for them. Johan, go ahead. Um, I was uh, just wondering, how do you communicate? What is your response to people who are overly secretive and just cautious about sharing their, the quotes they've shared with other, or they've received from other companies? They use words like, oh, that's for me to know, or that's classified. And I don't understand that, but like, how do you handle those situations? So I would definitely want to hear a specific call because it, the the way that you ask the question can sometimes make people feel um, like they don't want to share information. So if you're saying things like, what quotes have you gotten or what kind of prices did you get or stuff like that, that is going to make somebody feel like you're just trying to use my prices against me, even though they have no idea how that works, right? So when you say things like, what have you found? And be just kind of very gen gen generic, even if they say, well, that's none of your business, right? Then I always respond with, I, I apologize. I didn't mean to offend you. Every time, drop the rope, apologize, and then justify, right? Which would be, I guess it's it's just would be important for me to understand kind of where you've been prior to getting on the phone with me so that I can help you understand maybe what some of the quotes you've been getting mean. I guess, what what's the reason why you chose not to move forward with one of those, if you don't mind me asking? And kind of circle back to it, right? Well, I'm just price shopping and I'll stay there for a long time. And I'll say, well, have you found that a lot of the quotes that you're getting are you know close to or roughly around the same price? And if they say, no, they're all over the board, then I would say, well, have you considered that maybe the quotes that you're getting aren't even for the same type of life insurance? I mean, has anyone taken the time to help you understand why you're getting these quotes? Or are you just asking for a quote, somebody's giving you a price and we're ending the call? Like I will stay there and make it super uncomfortable as long as possible until I break them and they finally start opening up to me. But if you allow them to stay closed up then it's, it's a loss. Like you, you're, I would rather spend 10 minutes trying to get them to open up to me and lose the call rather than ignore it, spend 30 or 40 minutes. No, I'm going to lose it anyways. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. Thank I have you. to justify why I'm asking it. Cause if I don't get those answers, then it's, then, then my education will be weak. I won't know what I'm even up against. And I and if and if I allow them to not answer my questions, they are going to continue to not answer the rest of my questions, which means I'll have nothing. Right. So I won't actually leave discovery until I get them to open up to me or we'll end the call. <laughs> They'll just get so annoyed with me. They'll say, forget it. And guess what? They weren't buyers anyway. All right. So let's go to another call. I'm a licensed agent here in Utah. I do need to let you know that our call may be monitored or recorded for quality. And I understand that you might possibly be looking for some final expense coverage for you or your family. Um, I have life insurance through my job, but it wouldn't hurt to have some more. Absolutely. Before we hear Terry's response, what do you want to say right now? Okay, perfect. Be? So you got coverage to your job? Nope. It wouldn't hurt. No. It wouldn't hurt to have some more. What do you mean by that? Yes. Let's expand on answers. Expand. This is how you have your active listening on. This is the hardest part of this job is listening for these clues and getting people to expand on their surface level answers. It w why wouldn't it hurt? It wouldn't hurt to have a little more. I want to know what that means. I'm not going to make any assumptions that I know what that means. I want to hear it from her. So let's see what Terry said. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the policies that, uh, that people have through their jobs are usually um, good policies because they're, 
relatively inexpensive and the, the, they get group rates and sometimes the employer is paying for part of it. But people often don't realize that as soon as they stop working at that job, whether it's they retire, they're laid off, something happens, they take a, you know, a different job somewhere else, that the policy ends and everything they've paid into it disappears. So, um, you know, it, it is uh, quite common to have a, a, a policy separate or independent from the work. Um, what, what caused you to start looking for some uh, additional protection in the first place? Um, my husband's 66 years old and I'm 60 and just I thought, hey, we're getting old. And I buried my mother and my father and my sister and none of them had insurance and we paid for it and I didn't really think that my three children needed to pay for my family. There's so much to unpack here. I'm I'm on information overload right now, but I'm still not happy with the answers that I got. They are still a little bit surface. She's starting to go deeper here. So here's what I want to find out at this point. I want to know how much coverage she has with her job. So I hope we find that out. I also want to find out how much more coverage she's hoping to get. When I get to education is when I'm going to create that doubt or ask those questions about when that policy might terminate. Or I might ask a little bit in discovery, do you know if that policy stays with you if you ever leave that job? Just stay neutral. Um, I want to know that. I, based on what she said, she said her age. She said that she had multiple people pass, they had to pay for it. She doesn't want her three children paying for it. Um, there's so many questions we could ask right here. Anyone, anything rapid firing for you guys? I have a, when they say someone passed and we had to take care of it, are we supposed to like push on that bruise and have them tell us why it was so painful or is it way too early for that in the call? It depends how you ask. So what I don't do is kind of what you heard earlier. Like I don't come in early on and say, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that happened to you. That must have been really hard. Like taking what I think they felt and inserting it there because we're two minutes into the call and we're still building trust and it and it doesn't feel genuine coming from a salesperson at this point. It sounds like, of course, you're going to say that you're trying to get my business right from a very high level. So if you still remain neutral and slightly empathetic, I'm so sorry to hear that. What, what type of impact did all of that have on you and your husband? Just ask, let them share what type of impact it had on them instead of you inserting your feelings about it when all they're going to say is, yeah, uh-huh, it was, right, right? You got to flip it. To learn more information, you have to ask better questions to get them to expand on their answers, not give your opinion on how hard it must have been. What about saying she's getting old? How would you address that? She said all of that. If she had only said she's getting older, then I would have done what I had told Sammy to do earlier, which was, I guess, what about getting older has you thinking that now's the right time to add additional coverage? She probably then would have expanded and we would have found out people have passed. We probably would have then found out that additional information, but she was so open to just dumping her story early on that I wanna be careful about what I probe for here with all of that, I, I would have said, wow, that is a lot. What what type of impact did that have on your family when all this was going on? That's very simple question to just get them to open up and tell me a little bit more. Um, so again, and I also wanna know how much coverage her work policy provides and if she knows she can take it with her when she retires or leaves and how much more coverage she's hoping to get. Let's see, what, let's see where the conversation goes. Not uncommon. Um... People often don't realize the, the financial impact it can have um, at the same time that every, the family's all broken up and grieving and emotional, that there's also the 
financial aspect of it. So <clears throat> take that off the table, make it easier for your kids. I completely understand that. Um, so I, how long ago did you start looking for some additional insurance? Was it recent or have you been looking for a while? I've been looking for a while. And what have you been finding? I'm not finding anything I'm really interested in. I, I'm on a very tight budget right now. My husband is retired and only gets a thousand dollars a month and I'm the sole provider and I'm paying bills and putting food on the table, but there's not enough left for anything else. But it's tight. I hear you. I hear you. Well, I work with uh, people on fixed income and- uh, Okay, here's a mistake. We just shifted the focus right here. We just shifted the, fo yes, Sammy just pointed to himself. We just shifted the focus from her to us. Well, I work with people on fixed incomes. I know that feels like the appropriate thing to do right now, but it's not. Right now, we need to keep the focus on our customer. There is still information we don't know. We know that the reason she's been looking for a while and hasn't found anything is because it's too expensive. We need to keep probing for that information. So what I'm hearing you say is you have been looking for a while, you're on a fixed income, but you haven't been finding anything you like because everything feels a little expensive. I guess, what does that mean to, to expensive? I guess, what, have, what, what specifically have you found? I'm going to ask again, right? I need to know the quotes she's getting. So I know what I'm up against. So when I get to education, I can help her understand why she's getting those quotes, right? This is where the sale happens in discovery and education. You have to actually pretend like FCGS doesn't even exist because FCGS does not sell the policy. We sell the policy by help it understanding our customer and educating them in the way that they need to so they understand what their options really are. Once they know that and they have come to terms that, okay, I understand it now, I know I'm not gonna find anything else better. I've come to terms with that. I'm open to looking at something smaller that fits within my budget. Now you can tell them why they should get that policy with us because the FCGS is just the cherry on the top, but it is not the reason that people are going to buy. That is why you still get object price objections at the end because you're weighing too heavily on the FCGS to sell the, the policy. Right? So let's keep going. Uh, all the time. And um, I'm sure that we might be able to, to find something that might fit within a tight budget. Um, let me ask, what, what expenses are you most concerned about the family having to pay for when you do pass? I mean, what's the, what's the goal of the policy? Um, I don't want my kids to pay for my burial lot, my funeral, my headstone. I, like I said, I buried my father, my mother, and my sister. And okay. each their piece of smoke came to over $15,000. And I don't want the big stuff like the, <clears throat> the lot, the, um, Coffin, yeah, uh, sure, sure, exactly. Okay, and all of uh, that, that makes stuff sense. beyond there, right? Okay, um, and and God forbid you were to pass tomorrow, we never know the day or the hour. Who in your family was responsible for going to the funeral home, meeting with the director, making all of those decisions, and paying for it? Is it your, your husband or your sons? Or... Yeah, if my husband is still alive, he would be in charge. But if not, it would be my my three children. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, so if I can sort of summarize what I've heard so far is he, he, your your husband's retired, but you're still working. You're getting close to retirement as well. Money's tight. You've got a little bit of insurance through work, but you're looking for something that will 
um, you know, be there for when you're, you're not working um, and you're, you've had family members pass and you've seen the financial impact that it's had. You don't want to put that on your family, your children or your husband. So you're looking to find some, something that is affordable, but will be able to cover the, the bigger pieces of the, the bigger expenses associated with your funeral. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So let me go over what we do see. Okay. What other question do we get? Oh, you're on mute. Ed. I, I muted everyone when we listen so that there's no background noise. Okay. So uh, the consequence question about what would you do if you didn't find anything? What would if the kids do then? Here? And a lot of times when I'm on coaching calls, people ask me, people don't want to answer these questions. You know, I don't want yeah. to ask them, but it's tough. She was so open already. You really think she wouldn't have answered this question? She 100% would have answered the question. She was already so vulnerable with him from the beginning. So just because you get people sometimes that can't or won't answer questions doesn't mean everybody won't. She totally would have. Have you? So like how do you get someone to open up who's just holding back? I mean, that's a it's a tough question. Uh, I've uh, just today I heard, I don't want to think about that. It's, it's not actually a super emotional question. It's a very matter of fact question. You well, know? of course, but they don't want to answer. I don't want to think about that is what I was told. I, I push. I always push. Okay. Yeah, I say, Hey, Ed, I get it. I know you don't want to think about it, but we're on the phone right now talking about life insurance. So I guess what's the alternative if, if you don't get something, is there a plan B? Oh, okay. Yeah. Throw it out there. What would you do? What would you do? Seriously? Like this is a, and sometimes I'll even say, I can't take this more serious than you. <laughs> okay. So we're going to move on to education, but here's the thing with this call. I think that the, uh, there, there could be a good amount of agents that would hear this emotional need in her and think, gosh, as long as I can find something that she can afford, this is a slam dunk. It's not. It is not a slam dunk. This is a hard sale. This is someone who has already been looking for a long time and hasn't made a decision. So, <clears throat> but there's too many holes here. I, I literally don't know what I'm up against. I don't know how to educate her because I don't have the specific examples. And I don't know how much coverage her work policy has. I don't know how much coverage she's hoping to get. Because when someone already has coverage and they're looking for more, you definitely want to ask them, how much coverage are you hoping to get? Um, because maybe the quotes she's been getting are for 30 or 40,000, 50,000. We don't know, right? Because she's saying how expensive it is to be buried. A lot of life insurance agents will give quotes for what people want, not what they need, right? So what if she's been getting quotes for 30 or 40,000 and that's unaffordable? Well, that's great. Now we can talk about that. But what if she's been getting quotes for 5,000 or 10,000 and that's unaffordable? Well, then we we, we can't keep <clears throat> education at all if she can't understand that she's not going to find cheaper quotes than that, even if we can help save for the cost of the funeral. Right? That's a really hard thing to, to, to understand. So now we're going to go to education here and we'll see how he does. As opposed to term. Uh, do you happen to know the difference between the two? Has anybody ever explained that to you before? Term is um, um, long. Term is just short term. Life is through the day you die. Correct? That's the gist of it. That, that's the gist of it. Um, do you mind if I fill in the gaps a little bit and just make sure that you understand? Because th this is kind of important. If you don't understand the different types of policies you're getting quotes for, you might accidentally end up in something that wouldn't even be there for your family when you pass. So yeah, the, the best way that I can explain to you is this. Term insurance is temporary, as you said. It's designed to provide a large amount of coverage for a really small monthly payment but it only lasts for a particular period of time and then it cancels. And once it cancels, everything you've paid into it is gone. It stays with the insurance company. 
You usually have to be in about perfect health to get these policies, the term policies, because the dirty little secret of the insurance industry is that they only give term policies to people they're very sure are going to outlive the policy. Only about 3% of term policies ever pay out. They're really good if you are looking for a just-in-case policy when you've got a mortgage and a couple of kids at home and uh, you know, you're in your, your 30s or your 40s, God forbid something happens, you want the family to be taken care of. But it's a different thing when you're looking for, for when you're older. I mean, maybe you've seen the advertisements on TV or online. You get like $20,000 of coverage for $9.95 a month from AARP or Globe or Colonial Pen. Have you ever seen those? Yeah. Yeah. Those are examples of companies advertising their term or temporary protection programs. Um, they're really trying to take advantage of the fact that you might be looking for a huge amount of coverage for a really low payment. And the payment starts out low, but they go up very quickly. And then at the end, they just end up canceling. And then you're older and you have to reapply. And if your health has changed, you know, it could be a, a, unaffordable or you could even get declined. The worst part, though, about term policies yeah. is that once you turn 80, they just cancel forever, and now you're uninsurable because of your age. So, Cheryl, do you see how this type of temporary life insurance might not be the best when you're trying to protect your family for your final expenses? Yeah. Yeah. Now, whole life sure policies. Okay. So before we transition to whole life, since we didn't ask about the work policy at all in discovery, I was kind of hoping he would bring it up in education. So I definitely would have wanted to know what does she know about this work policy? Um, I wish I would have, I wish you would have asked at least how much coverage it provided, but I, this is an opportunity in education where you make the explanation part of your customer's story. You talk about the work policy here. Do you have any idea if you know if it stays with you? Most work policies are term, they cancel, they're part of group coverage. Right. And I would have wanted to know how much coverage it was compared to how much she's paying, because I guarantee you that's what she's comparing. Right. How much private insurance costs versus her contribution for a group term work policy and helping her understand why it's so different. Um, asking her how many more years she has to retirement, because her possible objection is, well, I still have this work policy for X amount more years. Right. And I need to create doubt. What's going to happen when that's gone? What if you can't get a policy when you retire? These are things in my head. What happens if your health changes? It's going to be more expensive with your age. If you think it's expensive now, imagine what it'll be then. Um, I, if I know the quotes she's gotten as she's been looking for a very long time, now I can help validate those quotes when I go to whole life and make her understand because we have to get these people to stop shopping. They're shopping because they still think there's something else out there that it, that doesn't exist. Well, good. I'm glad. Let me explain whole life policies because they're really the exact opposite. They don't provide as much coverage as the large term policies that we were just discussing. And the payment could be a little bit higher, but it's not unaffordable or nobody would ever get it. The real difference here, though, is that once you're approved, your payment can never go up. Your coverage can never go down. And you can't be canceled at any age. So this is typically the type of policy people get to make sure that their funeral costs and final expenses are paid for because they're permanent. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does it feel like that's the type of plan that you would be looking for? Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm not convinced. I am not convinced. Um, yeah, that was not convincing. If the whole goal here is to get them to talk us into what they feel is the right solution for them, was that convincing to you? No, not at all. I would say I heard a little bit of doubt there. What what made you respond that way? Right? You guys have to get these people to talk. Or what does Jeremy Miner say? We're living off hopium. We're just going to hope and pray that the FCGS is going to sell the policy. She's not sold. She's literally waiting for price. And the FCGS isn't going to mean that much because she's not convinced. 
right? We don't know enough about her situation. We don't know what she's dealing with. That was the end of education. And we're going to be spending all our time um, in the Funeral Consumer Guardian Society. This also did not end in a sale. Um, the notes, by the way, on this one were wants to talk to husband. He actually put notes in there. Okay. Oh, hi. This is just Ed calling. I noticed you recently inquired about possibly looking at some protection for yourself. I just wanted to see if I could help. Uh, what, about what, life insurance, uh, final expenses. Life insurance? Is that what you're calling about? Right. Life insurance, final expense policy, funeral protection. Does that ring a bell? Well, uh, tell me, just out of curiosity, what started you looking for protection for the family in the first place? Uh, for myself. I, of I, course. Uh, I was just talking to some of my friends, and they, they all had life insurance. So I, like I see. Yeah. Not a problem. Our call. What did she say? I couldn't understand a lot of what she said. I thought that's I what think you were going to say. She Ed. said she does have a policy. Okay, so I would have preferred that you would have done like an active listening response here and repeated back what she said. Did I hear you say this, this, and this? Did I get that right? Just to really make okay. sure because um, I don't know. I didn't hear it. All could be monitored or recorded. And just to confirm, I have your birth date as 12. Perfect. So I think you just told me uh, you don't have any protection now for the family in case something were to happen to you. Yes, uh, I don't have anything. Oh, I was wrong. Okay. W what about any kind of safety net like savings or investments? No. No? Okay. So right now there's no policy in place. How long have you been looking for one? Uh, just last night. Just last night. And uh, what have you found out so far? Uh, they're expensive. I know. They're expensive? expensive? I mean, they're like, what? you know, if it's 10000 it's like 40 bucks. <clears throat> but at one time, uh, in Phoenix, uh, a for $38 for $100,000. So you think policies are expensive today? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit more, but you know, they're all based on the age you start. Did you hear what she said, Ed? I muted you again. But did you hear what she just told you and what she's found? I want you to repeat that back to me. What did she just say? You're on, unmute yourself again. Sorry. She's found something for 10,000 at 40 a month and 100,000 at 38. Okay. So I would have repeated that back to her and tried to figure out like if she made sense of that. So you found a $10,000 oh. policy for $40 and a $100,000 policy for 38. Why do you think there was such a difference? Yeah. What does that tell you? Something like that. I just want to know like what she knows or what she doesn't know, or that's like just another way of getting her to expand on like what her um, conclusion is of that. And so I guess I would say here, um, so what, what exactly are you looking for? Cause that's a big difference and just kind of drill that down. But you have a lot of information here to um, educate her uh -huh. very, very well based on this information. I would not leave education, which we'll listen to, until she agrees with you that she wants the lower amount of coverage for the higher payment. Aha. Uh -huh. He has to agree with that with you that that is what she wants or there's no sale. Let's keep listening. Art and your health. Yeah. Did so what expenses are you most concerned about your family having to pay when you do pass away? 
Um, for my daughter. Well, something what do you mean by something daughter. for your daughter? Okay. What do you uh, mean by some that? Some money, uh, some money uh, that she can need. Some money for your daughter. You have one daughter? Yeah. Okay. And what about final expenses, like funeral costs? Yes, that, that too. Yeah. So God forbid you were to pass, say, tomorrow. Nobody knows the day or time. Would your daughter be the one to pay those costs associated with your funeral? Yes. Uh-huh. And I imagine you don't want her to have to pay those costs out of pocket if she didn't have to, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tell me more about that. Could she pay it out of pocket? Uh, no, I really don't want her to. Okay, perfect. And uh, have you given any thought to whether you'd have a cremation or a burial? No, I don't believe in cremation. I would have asked her why, by the way. I don't want her oh, to. Oh, but that's a religious thing. No, 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 no. When she said, no, but I don't want her to, the daughter... To pay. Oh, the daughter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would have said, but why though? Okay. okay. Do you already have a plot or a certain cemetery in mind? No, the back home in Arizona. I see. So have you thought about what would happen if you decided not I, to do anything at all? I don't know. What would you do? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Think about those things. Well, I know it's I uncomfortable just, to I, consider. I was, yeah, I just thought I was Okay. Well, if I understand, you still don't. If there was something that you could get exactly what. Yeah, I think part of what was awkward about this discovery is you feeling uncomfortable to ask her to like repeat what her answers were. Because I, I was having a really hard time understanding you. <laughs> well, I had a, she was talking on speaker. So a lot of what she said, I didn't get exactly. Yeah. And I probably I, I probably should have clarified more. Yeah, I think I would have clarified more on what caused her to inquire because I didn't really understand that. Um, and then in the consequence question, this came up earlier. Either you asked it or Johan asked it or maybe you both did. Um you know, when she said, I don't think about those things, I said, well, it sounds like you're thinking about it now, though. So I guess if you aren't able to find something that's a <clears throat> that provides the amount of coverage you're looking for, um, what's the alternative, right? I'm pushing for that because that, that's an objection that I have an opportunity to uncover. And if I don't know why she doesn't want her daughter to, to have to come out of pocket, that's also something I won't have leverage for. Okay. So this... Um, question a little more at that point. Just, yeah. I mean, but you don't, it doesn't have to be like an emotional question. It could just be matter of fact, right? It could just be, but I guess I know you don't think about it, but I guess we're thinking about it now because we're on the phone. So, um, I mean, is there like, you could just say, like I've said this a couple of times on this call, is there a plan B? Plan B. Yeah. You know, if you, if you don't get a policy because you can't <clears throat> affordable, what happens then? Because maybe this doesn't make sense, right? I mean, I'm going to sure do the best I can, mm -hmm. but um, I, I definitely, I, I think the difference is, is I don't get uncomfortable asking hard questions. I don't, because then my, I know my conversation is weaker and I'm not going to convert a hundred percent of everybody I have on the phone with. I'm just, I won't. Um, but I know I have a much higher chance of getting someone to cross over that edge of making that uncomfortable decision if I do. So there's really nothing bad that comes out of asking hard questions. Cause if someone isn't willing to answer those questions for you with you, they're probably not buying anyways. So mm -hmm. I've saved myself 45 minutes <laughs> and I can go on to the next person. What you're looking for at an affordable cost, would that help you and your daughter out? Yeah. So perfect. Uh, 
if I understand your situation, you're not going to be cremated. You don't believe in that. And you want to make sure your daughter doesn't have to come up with all the costs associated with final expenses. Is there anything else you're concerned about? And you want to leave some money for your daughter. Yes. Okay. When someone says they want to leave something extra on top of funeral expenses, it would be very appropriate for you to ask how much they were hoping to leave for the extra. Okay. Because you're going to be able to make recommendations for coverage based on their final wishes because we understand the cost of that. What mm. we don't know, the assumptions, which always get us in trouble, how much would you like to be able to leave your daughter if you could? She probably would have said 100000 <laughs> Yeah. Right. Sure. And so because she just doesn't understand what's out there. So this call cannot leave education until she's like, I get it. I get that that's my only option unless I'm healthy enough to qualify for a temporary policy. And then I better hope I don't outlive it. Like that's where you need this customer to get. Otherwise, she's not going to buy no, I know. By by the time I'm done, uh, her objection, she came back with, well, I'll let you go on. Uh, We're not going to go all the way to the objection at the end. Okay. Just- at the end, she came back with, well, I guess I need both, a whole life and the term. Mm-hmm. At the end of education? At the end of closing her. Uh, oh, after no. we did the health questions and I gave her a few quotes. Uh-huh. And then she she came because she does want to leave a lot of money to her daughter. And she heard the 38 bucks a month for a hundred thousand. Yeah. I explained the difference of term and whole life. I don't think she got it. Okay. Well, if you're not convinced that she was convinced, you got to go back. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to play what I said, maybe you could tell me what I did wrong. We're going to do it. I'm sure you did everything right. Oh no, (laughs) I didn't get the sale. Here we go. So perfect. Now, do you happen to know the difference between the two? Has anyone ever explained it before? You mean the term and the whole? Right. No, I don't know. I don't understand that. Okay, so just so we're on the page, same page, can you tell me your understanding of the difference? You only ask that if they say they do know the difference. Oh, okay. There's a response for yes and a response for no. Okay. She said she doesn't know. So you definitely wouldn't want to ask her to explain the difference if she doesn't know. Ouch. Okay. Right? (laughs) That's only if they say yes, I know the difference. Okay. If not, I'll explain it. I I don't understand. Okay, that's fine. That's important. Uh, because if you don't understand what type of policy you're getting quotes on that seem expensive, you could accidentally get something, won't even be there for your daughter when you pass. So the easiest way to explain term insurance is temporary protection. It's designed to provide a large amount of coverage and you have to be in perfect health to qualify for, for a small payment. Generally, it only lasts about 10 years, then it cancels. In fact, most policies don't last into our 70s or 80s. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Well, I'm sure you've seen advertisements online in the mail. So when, when, um, when you get information from the customer in the beginning, that 100000 for 38, you want to make sure that you bring it in here. Okay. Makes sense. The 10, that's why you got the quote for, that's an example of term insurance. It's a low that's payment, blah, blah, blah. So when you explain it, then you say, you know how you shared with me earlier. Yeah. Right. That's how yeah. you make it really true for them. That's how they, those, their light bulbs really go off when you help them understand their story. Right. When you stay generic, it's harder for them. Like we can't expect them to to say to you, oh, so you mean that quote I got for a hundred thousand for thirty eight is term? Oh, you mean the quote like they're not going to do yeah. that? Yeah, 
No. You have uh, to be the one to point it out to them. Okay. Or on TV for coverage, it says nine ninety five a month. They're from ARP, Globe Life, Colonial Pen, right? Yes. Exactly. Those are perfect examples of companies advertising their temporary protection programs. They take advantage of the fact that you want to pay as little as possible for the highest amount of protection, right? Yeah. Well, it starts out really low if you can qualify, but the price goes up every 10 years and then it cancels based on your age meaning it won't be there if you live past 70 or 80. Hopefully we live that long, right? It cancels forever. Every dollar you put into that policy, as I call it, is down the rat hole. You could never get it back. Now, do you see how temporary coverage might not be the best answer when it comes to protecting your family, your daughter, when you pass? Yeah. Why do you feel that way from what I explained? Why, why, why is it temporary? Well, that's how it's designed. It's designed for people who are in perfect health, knowing that if they did pass, it's probably an accident. And the likelihood of that happening is rare for somebody who's in perfect health. And then they collect the money and then after a certain age, they drop the people, the insurance company drops you. Now, whole life. I, I'm not convinced. Yeah, I know. I, I got flustered by her. Yeah, yeah. But she didn't do anything or say anything to make you feel flustered. Oh, she said temporary. Why is it temporary? That's because she didn't for... understand it, right? Right. She, does, she still doesn't understand it, which means the way. I'm seeing was... how if I said Remember when you told me you got a quote for a hundred thousand for only thirty eight a month? That's an example of term insurance. Right. The rate's going to go up maybe every year, every other year, every five years. That's what AARP does, and it starts out low. And I could have used that example. Then, do you see why? Do you see how term insurance might not be the answer from the quotes you've been getting? Yeah. The other way you can sometimes explain it too is, um, you know, you could say something like, why, how, why do you think an insurance company would give someone a hundred thousand dollars of life insurance for $38 a month? If the chances of them passing away during the 10 years is high, like, how does that even make sense? The reason, and let them answer. The reason that you can get 100000 for 38 is because they're banking on the fact that you are going to outlive the policy. And what do you think happens to all of those payments of $38 that you made all, all of those years? Right? If, you, if, you, if you explain and end with a question, instead of just telling the information, it forces them to come up with the answers so they are understanding it. They'll say, they'll say what happens or it'll, it stays with the insurance company. Exactly. So that's why you can get so much coverage for such a small payment, because if you get approved for a policy like that, there's actually a 97% chance that you're going to outlive it. And all that money stays with the insurance company and you don't get any of it back. Right. So then I'm going to ask her again. So tell me why you wouldn't want to get a term policy in your own words, right? You okay. can even be that specific, right? Or or why you would, right? Either, either way is fine. I just want to mm -hmm. make sure that we have a decision here on whether or not she does or doesn't. Because if she says, well, I would want it because that's a great deal. And I would say, okay, well, let me ask you this then. You told me earlier that part of this money was supposed to pay for your funeral, right? And you want a traditional burial, which... That could be anywhere from 15, 20, 25,000, right? So what happens then if you live 10 years in one day and then you pass and there's no money? What happens then? Who pays for your funeral? Where does the money come from? Right? I need to her to start thinking about the consequences of getting a cheap policy. 
a large amount of coverage. And then tell me, I need her to like convince herself that that's probably not the best choice. That will allow me to segue to whole life and then bring in her other example. That's why we ask those questions, Ed. So sure. we can get that information and use it here, right? So you you got a gift early on and you didn't- I got the information. I didn't use it at the right place. Yeah. So then you said way to whole life, which would be so on the other side, you also got this quote. Like it was literally a gift in a bow landed in your lap. <laughs> right. And I know why you got this quote for this much, because it never cancels. It lasts forever. So the amount of coverage makes sense for the payment because it doesn't matter when you pass away. Your dot the briefcase example is perfect here for her. Correct. Let's look at it this way. A yeah. hundred thousand versus ten thousand. There's a three percent chance here, a hundred percent chance here. What briefcase do you choose? Right? If she says a hundred thousand, you have to end the call. I can't help you, right? If you don't see value in getting a policy that lasts forever that doesn't provide as much coverage, there's nothing that the FCGS can do to save this. Right? They have True. to see value in the policy first. I see that now. I just didn't catch it in the moment. Mike, I just have to say that at this last three hours highlights why I got my ass kicked so much this week. Really? With like inconsistency. When you said you have sales slumps because you're not like it's ra there's random things. You're trying different things. You're like in your own head and you're just like, it's like, oh, yeah, I did that. I did that this week with a couple that I thought were going to go all the way to the end. Oh, I did that too. So, and it's, and even though I watch the YouTube channel a ton, when I'm, when we're like doing stuff fresh now that I'm in the trenches, it's totally different. Mm. And it's so, it's like so helpful too. not like, Oh, I just need to listen to more like Tony Robbins over the weekend and Monday I'm going to like crush well, it. That no, stuff it, fades, right? Yeah, you know, the motivational yeah. stuff fades. It's the sales yeah. skills that truly right, last right. a lifetime. If you were looking for some information on protecting your family if you were to pass away. And I just wanted to yes. see if you still needed that or if I could help at all. Yeah, I do. I, I wanted like a pre-burial type thing for me and my husband or something yeah. like that would give us some protection. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, so, uh, Betty, I, I do need to let you know that our call today may be monitored and recorded for quality. Uh -huh. And um, so you're looking for you and your husband. That's what's correct. His, uh, okay, what's his first name? Salvador. Oh, Salvador. Okay. And you are a resident of the state of Texas. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay, great. And um, just out of curiosity, what caused you to start looking for some coverage and protection in the first place? Well, I mean, I'm 57, he's 58. I mean, you know, some, you know, I don't want to leave it for my kids. It's our responsibility. Right, right. Uh, are you all both working or uh, retired or on disability? Retired, retired. retired. Okay. Okay, and... Um, are you, are you drawing any pension or Social Security or, or um, yes, like Social that? Security, both on Social Security. Okay, all right, great. And um, you said you had some kids. Are they all like young adults living on their own, or any of them live with you? Oh, they're all grown. I've got grandkids. Yeah, they're all grown. Oh, okay, how many grandkids? Nine. Wow, one more, and you'll yeah. be at double digits, Betty. <laughs> they're they're still going they're still going they okay. probably will be yeah. all right so um now just so i get a better idea uh betty are you are you th are you and your husband salvador thinking more of a traditional burial or like a cremation or no traditional burial traditional okay and then um are you um do you already have like a, a family plot at like a cemetery somewhere or does all that need to be up? I actually, my first husband passed away in, in 95. And so when I buried him, I buried him like 12 feet down so I could be on top and I got the okay. marker and everything. So that okay. plot is paid for. I do, but I do need one for my current husband. Okay. But I will have to pay for the opening and closing there. 
Just the opening and the closing. Okay. No problem. Okay. Now, um, let's see here. Now, have you and Salvador kind of talked about, hey, babe, if something happens to me, I want you to do this and take care of this stuff, but you should be okay? Or, like, can you you guys kind of had some, like, mutual, like, planning um, discussion? Um, we've talked a little bit about it. He doesn't like to talk about it. Um, sure. You know, if something that's going to happen, I'm, 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 I'm ready to talk about it, you know. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I understand for some folks, they maybe they get a little superstitious. They're like, hey, this feels a little dark. Why are we talking about it? It's like, yeah, well, because right. I like peace of mind. Sure, sure. Now, right. um, and I don't want to leave it and, for nobody. Now, you and Salvador both, uh, mm -hmm. do you have any life insurance in place right now or no? No. I have something on my pension where at my death, it'll pay me five, will pay them my survivor. 5000 out, you know, out front, but that's oh, okay. it. Right. Okay. Oh, so no ongoing monthly, just a one-time uh, 5K. Yeah, just a one-time. Okay. Okay. And does Salvador have anything like set up like that or no? No. No, nothing at all. Okay. All right. So, okay. Okay. Now, is um these types of financial decisions, are these something... Where you're like, hey, Salvador, I went ahead and took care of this, and I'm kind of informing you as, like, the mother. Yeah, that's the way to be. That's the way to be. All right, great. No, he so, brought everything um, up to me. Okay, all right, that's good. Um, now, um, now, are you receiving all, like, your monthly payments and things into, like, a traditional checking account? or how? Okay, it sounds like you're ending discovery here. Guess what her first objection is? When she told me this is all I make all the decisions. Guess what her first talk to my husband. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, wait, I want to keep you accountable for what you said, but I missed stuff that didn't It's close only because the she wasn't convinced. That's all, right? right? She's not convinced. So um for those that are on with us still, hanging on with us for three hours today, um, what did Sammy miss? Well, where is your husband, right? Well, I definitely would have asked, is he there? But there's a possibility that he maybe wasn't. But anytime it's for someone else, I would I would say, oh, perfect. Go ahead and bring your husband on the phone. So absolutely. But what did he miss in discovery? How long what? has he been looking? Has she been looking? I did. What else? And what has she found? Right. There was actually something very specific that she said in the very beginning when she told Sammy what she was looking for that had alarm bells going off in my head. The funeral planning package thing? Similar, no. but she used a specific word. The, 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 uh... She used the word prepaid burial. So... I, I'm I'm making some assumptions, of course, but I'm never going to go with those assumptions. I'm going to ask, but I'm super curious to know how long she's been looking, what she's found. I'm curious to see if she's talked to maybe a funeral home or talked about what a prepaid burial looks like, because those words aren't just something that people make up. They've heard them before. So getting that patient intake form is really, really important. You have to know what you're up against. Um, and I don't know what I'm yeah. up against, right? You have to make some assumptions that this is not the first time they've talked to somebody about life insurance before. They did not go 58 years ever having a life insurance conversation. Where have you been prior to getting on the phone with me? I need to know. You're exactly right. Because when I quoted 12,000, you know what she said? How do you know that's going to be enough? Because I bet her prepaid pre-need proposal is like for 15 or 18 grand. Well, here's the other thing, Sammy. Right. What I know is that she already has a plot. Right. And she has to pay for opening and closing, maybe a couple of other things. There's a really obvious question here that you need to ask her because she's getting 5,000 from her pension when she dies, her family is. What's the question with that information? Why do you feel the 5,000 is not enough mm -hmm. to take care of these expenses? 
How much do you think it costs to pay for opening and closing? Right? How much do you think it costs for all of these expenses? Right? So when someone has experience, it's good to know what they think.